Magic Gaming and Esports Hot Topics, Hot Tweets, the spiciest memes. I'm Marissa Roberto. And I'm Lisa Dwan, the mustard to her ketchup. <laughs> and this is how the show is going to work. Producer Tyler's got two minutes on the board, and we got four topics that we will present and possibly argue. Mm -hmm. Luckily for us, there is a mute button only to be used when one of us gets out of line, and you know it's going to be Marissa. What? No, and it's a little dirty today. I don't know why. It's because touched it last. No, probably. it was AJ and Brody. Let's blame the boys. Oh, Listen, shut up to chat. We like it when you call us out when we're wrong and praise us when we're spinning truth. So let's get to it, shall we? Another day, another piece of drama is a growing fight between Tifu and FaZe Clan. In his first public statement since Tifu sued FaZe Clan over his contract, the popular streamer urged FaZe Clan to, quote, release the expletive contract. Tifu said that he is trying to serve justice to esports through the lawsuit. For his part, FaZe owner Banks tweeted out that the org is indeed planning on releasing Tifu's contract, but that they have to go through lawyers first since this lawsuit was unexpected. Lisa, is releasing the contract maybe a good move or should they maybe keep this thing under wraps? Well, 100% it's a great move if they have nothing to hide, mm. right? And that's what Banks, the owner, is saying. So it's almost like he can't really bluff this because right. if it comes out, then it's like over him. What I don't like about this whole situation is almost like Tifu is trying to make himself a martyr. If you watch the video, it sounds very like he's trying to convince us, like he's the victim here. Like I'm trying to do this for all of esports, you know? Like mm. this is all of our battle. I'm just like, okay, this is getting a little too like dictator speech-like. Mm. Like if you really just wanted to get out of it, your know, Banks tweeted out that like, if you really just wanted to get out of it, you could have just approached me. Like we could have yeah. talked about this. Yeah. And I don't think Tifu ever responded to that claim. So it's almost no. like, is he just doing this for more attention? It's almost like the way the way he went about it just didn't seem right. It seems yeah. too martyrish. Listen, these guys are really young. Okay, they're, yeah. they're really young. Sure, let's make excuses for them. No, I don't. <laughs> it's tough not to when they're so young okay. because people get taken advantage of all the time, especially in esports. And I do appreciate that he's coming forward with something because it makes people and content creators open their eyes to see and realize that they must read contracts put before them. I don't, I have issues with FaZe Banks right now only because he, he feeds into the toxicity of esports, okay? He's giving Keemstar all this money to team up with UMG, very sneakily, by the way, because Epic does not want to work with Fortnite, but like this is another topic mm. altogether. Epic wow. doesn't want to work with, Epic does not want to work with Keemstar. Keemstar nice. is now working with UMG because Epic works with UMG uh. to get them to do their Fortnite Fridays, and he's been given money by FaZe Clan. Like, it's, it just irritates me, the whole toxicity toxicity, the circle of toxicity that happens right. with these bros. It's the same here with Tifu as well. Like, obviously, he was a part of this. I yeah. want there to be more positivity in esports, and if this is the way we need to get it, then so be it. I think that the contract obviously needs to be released because we need all the information here. There's a lot of things going around, a lot of fingers pointing, yeah. a lot of people taking to arms against Tifu, and it kind of, like, feels bad for him because he had all of these friends from this org and friends from other orgs, and now everybody's kind of teaming up against <laughs> yeah, him, so people, people that have orgs behind them. You're Clearly, Team Tifu. I'm not. I'm not Team Tifu. I'm Team Truth. I'm Team so, Honesty. Hashtag. I'm te release the contract. Release the contract. All right, let's move on. If you love to hear stories about international relations, then today's your lucky day. Japan's foreign minister asked English-speaking media this week to use, write, and speak Japanese family names first, oh. followed by personal names. That changes a policy that has been in place for over a century and poses a problem for esports. Hmm. For example, legendary Street Fighter pro Daigo Yumehara would now be known as uh, Yumaharo Daigo, which oh, right. is a switch right there. Yeah. Do you think esports tournaments and players should follow this policy, this change? So like Daigo, obviously we know him as first name Daigo, yeah. but now we'd have to switch it with this new policy. I mean, so weird. Uh, yes and no, because mm. you want to pay respect to a country that does this, right? Yes. So this is, this is how they address people in their country. And I think that if you're playing tournaments in that country specifically, mm -hmm. then absolutely that's how players should be addressed, especially Japanese speaking players. I think every other player, no, because we're not used to that. Like, there's no, that would be so weird for me to just greet you in the morning and be like, hey, Dewan. Like, although I could you do that, actually. You said it right! I always say it right! So no, you don't. Okay, I 80% okay, of Roberta. the time say it right. And, like, it's okay, like, I guess we're friends, so we could do that just jokingly, but it's not something that we need to do out of respect for one another. So There's definitely I, no respect here. Yeah, so. there's, like, zero. <laughs> Um, no, but I think that just going to the country, absolutely, it makes sense that this would be brought up. Why not? This is a sign of respect. This is how you do it. Yeah, I, I agree, though. I guess it's a big change, especially in the country. Obviously, when you're there, definitely use their customs. It's respectful. Mm. But then now it's like when you're at international events, mm. do they have to change their way? If we have a standard where we say right. first names first instead of last name, it's almost like, I, are they imposing their culturalness in this sense when we're not right. in Japan? Right. It shouldn't happen when we're not in Japan. 
and international, mm. yeah, when we're speaking internationally and um, there are international journalists there, yeah. then maybe when speaking to somebody from Japan, yeah. that makes sense, right? Because you want to, if that's how they want to be addressed, then fine. I do want Daigo to come forward and say something, yeah. though. Like, what does he want? I want? Exactly, like, this is just um, an overarching, this is how you should do it. But what do the players actually want? Like, let's ask them, because you don't want to disrespect the player, especially that's when true. you're interviewing them. So I think before you start any interview, if they're doing a presser of any kind, just ask them before they get out there, how would you like to be addressed? That's and then we really can solve this issue. That's right. That, I agree with you, Roberto San. Ah! Uh, <laughs> <two> <laughs> <one>. <laughs> Listen, this week, we'll never give up. Stop later. Let me announce that he would be retiring from League of Legends. The pro considered retiring at the start of 2018, but inevitably chose to stay with the team. For reference, let me is only 23 years old and has never won a domestic title. Wah, wah, wah. This raises an important question, What's Lisa. What's the question, Marissa? Hmm. At one point, should esports players actually retire? Because he's pretty he's only young. 23. I mean, because they could really damage their legacy by playing too long, but don't you want a title? Like, it's just so hard to... Yeah, like, why stop? Say, yeah, well, what? I mean, I think, I think at this point, if an esports player is retiring, it's because they're either not in the right mind space to mm. keep playing, because it's a very difficult job mm. to do, right? To compete in this kind of space. Or they literally just mechanically can't keep up anymore, and that's yeah. fine. They can retire because of that. Mm. Um, in terms of average esports retirement age, I think for, like, certain scenes, it's a little different, right? Like, yeah. I think League, the average is kind of, like, 25. Mm. And we also see people kind of go, go to retirement, but then come back yeah. <laughs> whenever they feel like it. So, yeah. Is there really retirement in esports now I, that I think about it? No, I mean, oh. they can still stay in the esports scene. Of course, there's yeah. plenty other jobs for them out there, even on an analyst desk if that's what they choose to do. Yeah. Um, and that can, you know, create some longevity there for their careers. Because it's tough to say, like, they're so young. There's so many opportunities to then get into a different career. If that's what they wanted to do, they can take that skill set and apply it to something else. Yeah. It's just so interesting to watch these players grow and yeah. then have them say they're retiring at such a young age. Like, makes me feel a certain way, obviously, because I am Squad old. Nana. Oh, because. Yeah, because I am. I, I, you didn't even say that word, Lisa, but you know, squad not as real. So, uh, <laughs> okay, so no, wait, the, like, feels. the question is though, like, in terms of legacy, so do you think that a player's legacy actually gets tarnished when they play for a long time, even past? their prime? Uh, it only gets tarnished if they themselves are tarnished. Like if they themselves, like say, I don't know, some kind of scandal comes out about them because okay. they've been cheating in some way or they've, you know, changed their input settings and then all <laughs> of a sudden we realize that they've been using uh. some kind of cheat. So um, it's only tarnished if they themselves tarnish it. If they're amazing and they continue playing, well, yeah, why not? In your prime, you don't necessarily retire. But I think the whole point is like, should you kind of retire at your prime? So that way you have a legacy, you're always great. And when you stop playing, people will still always look at you positively mm -hmm. or wait till you kind of become a has-been and then retire. I think that, that just applies to the player itself. Like, it's totally subjective. Like, yeah. do you want to keep making money and playing video games? Okay, <sighs> then keep doing it if you're, like, super hard and set in the fact that you need to remain a legend. Yeah. And have your legacy remain. Then, okay, like, retire, man. It's retire okay. and do your thing. Glory or money. And yeah. we know. It's, it's all, all about, about the money. money. All right, moving on. <laughs> a new game console has taken the internet by storm. Called the Playdate and developed by a small publisher and developer Panic, the handheld is radically different from past consoles. Namely, the screen is black and white, includes a crank on the side, mm -hmm. and games for it will be released weekly in what is called a 12-game season. The first game will be developed by Katamari Damacy creator Kida Takahashi, and the Playdate itself will cost 150 US dollars. Hmm. Marissa, what do Matt, you think of this? I think it's is Soldier so Boy. Right now. Oh, is he? I was gonna say Soldier sure. Boy behind this, you know, crank that. Mm. Oh my god, crank watch uh. Soldier Boy actually be behind this because he's been trying to release right? a console of his very own, except he just takes other consoles that are already made and then puts his name on it. <laughs> so uh, let's see if he puts his name on this baby right here. It's so cute though. Like look at how cute uh, this is. It's adorable. I I first when I when I first saw this, I'm like, oh my god, another friggin' something that people are just gonna throw away. It kind of looks like a Game That's Boy. That's immediately what I thought of. Yeah, it's a Game Boy feel for yeah. sure. But think about it. We have games and we play them on our phones, absolutely, and we can do that. We have consoles literally in the palm of our hands every single day. But this is super tiny. This can be useful in a zombie apocalypse. Okay, think about it. When the power goes out, what are you gonna do? You gonna crank, crank that? that? <laughs> you gonna uh, crank that? I'm not. I'm not buying it literally and you know metaphorically. Oh my god, because it's too expensive no, for you, you cheap what? ass. How dare you put me on the spot? It's That's true. Not why? That is not why. It's the whole release. Releasing a game was it once every week? 
It's yeah, weird. It's, it's, a 12 game. No, it's no, 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 no. It's weird. It's weird because, like, you know, we're so busy in our lives. When I want to play a game, I want to play a game now. And the fact that it's dictating when I get to play a new game, it's, it's weird, okay? I want to play when I want to play. Oh, my God, because you don't have other consoles to feed that need. You don't oh, have a PC to feed that need. You don't Ms. have... Gucci you don't, Bell got consoles what? everywhere, oh okay? Not everyone has a luxury, Marissa, and that's the point. See how she <laughs> thinks? You have See a console thinks. in your hand. You have a phone. There, you why can do you need to buy this? You don't need to. It's your option <laughs> as a consumer. You can buy whatever the F you want. You don't want to buy it, that's fine. I'm not going to throw shit on you for not buying it. I might because that's games enough. Matthew Hempstead for sure is going to because the first game came out was made by like his favorite game developer. Oh, yeah. It's happening. Uh, no, it's fine. And then we'll play the games and we'll crank down when the power goes out and you'll just be sitting in the corner all jelly in the dark. How about You're that? not going to buy it. You're not going to buy it. I, I'm going to try to get it first and then see it. <laughs> then I might buy it. <laughs> All right, there it's time to check in with streamers and clip it. Our first clip comes from Miss Kiff again, who is feeling the holiday spirit and decided to revive an old friend. And you brought him back. Naked? That, what? That escalated really quick. Where yeah. was the naked person? I didn't see I, a naked person. Bag, hugging the bear. So I like someone clipped that. Nothing. Show me the naked person. Yeah. I, I missed that completely. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know what the hell is happening in that clip. I like, never know. Are you having a party now in summer with the Christmas thingy in the back? Yeah. Why, why are they getting feisty? Why are they fighting it? Is well, it, some people do like Christmas in July parties. I know that's a thing. Who the hell? Um, oh my God, Camille for sure would do that. Oh. Like 100% watch it happen this year. Can we, put this on blast? Can we put her on blast? Because, yeah. you know, there's, there's two types of people. Yeah. People who, you know, are like Christmas a reasonable amount. And yeah. then there's Camille. Because yeah. she likes to support Christmas all year round. Um, in the office right now, she literally has decorations around her desk. And she actually tried to put this like little bell thing on my side. Yeah. Hell not. Nah. <laughs> I am not for that. She is obsessed with Christmas. She is Disney 100%. And we need to stop. That's well, it. Well, Tyler thinks that, it, that she's just too lazy to take her Christmas lights down. Like she, no. she actually doesn't love it that much. She's just too lazy to take down the decorations. No, no, no. She loves it. I'm lazy. I'm lazy. And she. She. And. Yeah. And, and she. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Uh, but she just likes Christmas too much. Love All it. right. Let's move on. Um, our next clip is from Hat Chubby, who has an interesting hack if you need to take off your headset when your hands are dirty. Yeah. It happens. Mm, dirty. <laughs> Wash your hand. Okay, go. Wash your hand. Good. <laughs> Good. Okay, so I uh, felt like that was maybe impossible to do, so I yeah, wanted to give it a try. Wanna, okay, uh, wait. Can you help me out here? Yeah, yeah, of course. We let, obviously prepared a lot our, for this. Ready? Look at this. Box from so I have the headset. Deck. Thanks, HyperX. Um, put it forward. I can do this. is too easy. No, me, you can't. You're not going to make it. I want to get some aerial. <laughs> You're not going to make I'm gonna it. I'm going to get them ready. Okay. I'm you scared. guys. I'm scared. Lisa. Lisa. Ten points. Lisa. Ha! Oh, I knew it. 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 I so listen, <laughs> it truly is the best time of the day where we scroll the Twitters to bring you all the things that pros bless us with on their timeline. We especially love it when they blow our minds with how we've been doing things like eating chips the wrong way. Hmm. Mid tweets, y'all ever realize that you can push a bag of chips from the bottom upward and you never have to dig your entire hand into the bag? I feel like a scientist right now, holy-ish. Yeah, so like a tube of toothpaste? That's not right. How do the hell do you roll a bag <laughs> you, of chips? You crunch. You gotta crunch it from the bottom. Like you, 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 you move it from the bottom up. I don't understand. Why don't you just like you, shuffle it so you push the chips down? I or up? Yeah, I just feel like that was a trolling tweet. Like you know when people say that you should put milk in before cereal. I feel like that was one of those. Like yeah, unless he just had this like brilliant moment, he might have been hitting the green, and he had this like brilliant moment of like pushing the bag of chips up, like pushing the chips up, and then like having the chips just hover over the edge. Like a halo. That is the dumbest thing I might have heard okay. today. And well, I've already talked to Marissa, so hey, you know that's bad. What? Anyways, is there ever really a good week of profound thoughts if there's no Jay Wong? Mm. This time he's showing off with the little shelfie. 
Oh, all right, so it's either the following, I'm cool as ish, or I'm a degenerate nerd. Who wants to take a vote? <laughs> what are we voting here? I, I feel like por que no los dos, Justin? Like, why can't, why can't it be cool, and also why can't he be a degenerate nerd? Like, we kind of all are, right? Like, I've got, a, I've got legitimate shelves with a lot of stuff, particularly like amiibos and like different peripherals. It's just all on display that I'm very proud of. And like, you can make fun of me all you want, but I don't care. Uh, por por que, por Portuguese? Por que, por que no los dos What did she just say? Espanol. She can't just switch languages like what? that in the middle. What did you just it's say? It's a did me, she say Lisa. Mean? It's a meme. It's the little girl. Remember like the, the taco meme with like the, you don't remember this? Where it's like she wants a hard shell or a soft shell. Like they can't <laughs> decide. And then she's like, por que no los dos? And then everyone lifts her up in the chair and they cheer and Marissa, they get excited. You need to stop watching that Spanish television. What? It's it's a, a, that that a channel, she's break. obsessed with it. It's you need to stop. Meme. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, you can just spam ones and check if, Lisa, if you think Lisa is loco. Uh, okay. I uh. Our last pro about that is brought on by DreamHack's announcement of a 100K tournament for women to compete in CSGO and the many Ooh. toxic messages that followed. Lots of hot takes are flying around. One of them came from former pro Mara Jade, who used to compete and be the only girl on men's teams. She says, most esports teams don't allow women, not because they aren't good enough, but because they don't want to deal with the drama of hearing the men whine and complain about a girl on the team. That's literally the reason I've been rejected from teams in the past solely because I was a girl. Lisa, is this even surprising at all? I mean, I'm not surprised, but this honestly is like a reflection on, you know, the whole argument whether you should have segregated schools in terms of gender? Yeah. This is like the same idea. Exactly. And I think it's the dumbest thing mm -hmm. in the world because isolating the genders mm -hmm. are not going to help them no. in the long run because you know what? Guess what? The real world, there's all of us. We're yeah. all together, guys. So if you're going to like spend years in school or be on teams that don't have both genders, you're actually doing yourself a disservice because you don't know how to interact with each mm -hmm. other, right? Yeah. And it's unfortunate that women in the esports scene mm -hmm. have to go through this and lose jobs or not get jobs mm -hmm. because of how men or other genders, I'm going to say men and women, sure, no, uh, can't I'm, learn how to work together, guys. Come no, on, of it's course. 2019. And of course, a lot of people, are, a lot of men are salting on her uh, even for this comment, calling her a thought because she also does a lot of NSFW stuff. Like, just kind of, uh, they'll, they'll take whatever they can to, like, throw shade uh, on these women who speak out against this stuff, which is totally unfortunate. But I did just host a panel mm -hmm. with a Call of Duty pro okay. uh, recently where he was saying, listen, I like, his girlfriend also plays professional COD, like, but she can't, it's just been an issue. Like, she can't actually play on a team with men because of the complaints that happen with men on the team. Like, the woman on the team is immediately mm -hmm. just kind of rejected and pushed aside. It be, it's a very much a boys club yeah. still, and it will remain this way, unfortunately, for a while. Like, we're not going to be able to see we're not going to be able to see co-ed teams really shine, I don't think, for at least another five years. That's at, at disappointing. Least. That's really disappointing. I know. And just it's the fast. fact that it's a girl's day on Unmuted today and boys' day yesterday, well, that was completely coincidental. Yeah. We're all about the mixing. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, let's move on because it's time to get some crowd control. This is where we showcase some of the great or simply dank things the community has been making. Mm. So on the topic of things to see, let's check out this first post by the final hoss introducing the latest fish skin for Dr. Disrespect. <laughs> oh, God. Hoss is really gilling it with this new skin. That was so fitting. Okay, Lisa. Yeah, okay. I, she's writing all these puns. It's fine. I wrote yeah. the puns. Say it's it. It's really Lisa. good. Real. Like I can real. see how one can get hooked on that skin. Okay. Okay. Look at how excited you were about it. I was it. excited, but it really fell flat. So uh, what? enough of that. Um, but, <laughs> Tyler and I had a lot of fun coming up with those puns, by the way. <laughs> all right. Guys. Tyler should not be allowed <laughs> to touch the scripts. He, he touches the scripts. Uh! I don't know where that went. Okay, okay. what I want to know yeah. is, <laughs> I want to know, stop it, Tyler. <laughs> what I want to know is what kind of skin would you want made of you? So obviously this is a fish, that was a fish inspired skin. What would you want for yourself? Okay, first of all, no girl should have a fish skin. Aww. Let's just, let's just throw you, that We've out there. eaten fish skins together. Do no, no, yes, fish but balls? like, for sure. But just in game, if oh. there's gonna be a female character, we just shouldn't have a fish skin, unless it was mermaid related. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I don't know, like a unicorn, something cute, like Animal Crossing-ish. I like cute stuff. That's okay. disappointing. Why, what about you, Mustard? No, I hate mustard. I'm actually, I'm not happy with how this worked. I'm a really big ketchup fan. <laughs> um, in terms of skin, I would want something like so crazy different. Like I don't want to almost recognize me. Uh, the other day, Zurich in the producer room was talking about how the new Winston skin for Overwatch, oh, yeah. I think it's a gargoyle skin. He's like, it doesn't even look, that's my mission. <laughs> 
It doesn't necessary. even look like him. But that's what I want as a skin. You don't want a skin that looks like something, you know what I mean? You want something new. Actually, I'm really happy with my impression. That was, really uh, that, was that was pretty good. No, I think you and I are just like heavy on the KDA as well. Like oh. we love the we love the K-pop stuff too. Mm. If there could be some kind of K-pop oh, skin, like we'd be all for it. And if they look like us, even better. I'm I'm down. I know Mad Scientist in chat is also saying that he's working on a little something oh for us. God. So like I'm just excited about that. Hurry but up. Moving on, let us ponder the future of gaming. Reddit user Rafaro has some ideas. Ooh. It says crossplay should be standard for all new multiplayer games. Hmm. Yes, do you agree with this statement, Lisa? Yes. I, I think it's pretty. Why are you giving me that look? Yeah, I think 100%. You pondered, like you're going to say. Well, the I pondered because I want to give it some thought, you know, yeah. try it sometimes, Marissa. Um, <laughs> So I think, yeah, for multiplayer games, crossplay should be a thing because I don't want to invest in a console or whatever and not be able to play with my friends from other yeah. consoles, right? Like, it just, let's unite everyone instead of segregating everyone. Mm. Back to the topic. I love that. Yes, I do agree with you, but it has to be, PC still has to be segregated, unfortunately, because... Because it's master race. The, yeah. Like, if we're going to get into segregation and race here, oh. PC oh. PC uh -oh. is the actual, like, it, it really is because you people that are skilled on PC can't really play, can't be playing against people on console. Like there's just, there's the feedback is totally different. Yeah. The reaction time is totally different. And okay. it's not, it's just not fair to be, for people to be playing against people playing on PC. That's so PC has to remain separate. All consoles for sure, yes, crossplay. Crossplay would crank that too. <laughs> crossplay crank that. <laughs> All right, speaking of consoles, let's wrap it up with this last post from Poofy underscore. Mm. Ever wonder what your favorite console from the past would go for nowadays? Well, now you can somewhat know. Mm. So this image was created sometime in 2016, and so it's not completely accurate, and uh, it gives you an idea of what the cost of the console would be with inflation, okay? Okay. So for example here, you can see that the Xboxes and the Wii consoles are about the same price, mm -hmm. but if you go to the older ones, like the Atari, they've increased substantially. The most yes. expensive one on that list right there is the Neo Geo, which was released <laughs> in 1990 and cost $650, but now it would cost Eleven hundred dollars. Yikes! That's, that's crazy. Big, yikes for me, that's dog. Crazy. The Neo Geo, especially. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I saw some yeah. other things on there. Obviously, GameCube. Like, just really happy with those consoles. Th th those are the consoles of my childhood, right? So, what was your first one? Nintendo. What was your first one? Uh, well, my dad had an NES, so Aww. that was the first console I ever played on. But the first console we ever got gifted to us yeah. from Santa was N64, and that was like the greatest Christmas of all time. My brother and I used to fight so much, and like that actually brought us closer together. We played Mario Kart. We played GoldenEye, Slappers Only. Like, that was just That's such so an amazing cute. time. There's nothing better than getting a console at Christmas. Um, if you're lucky enough to have one, like you, you know what I speak. So let us know in chat what your favorite console was of all time, console. what your first console was, and uh, just share those memes with us. We love reading them. But that's all for Unmuted today. Remember, you can always hit us up on our socials. Just say hi or send us stuff to react to, okay? Someone type an exclamation mark right now to see our socials, and uh, we'll see you next time.